Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. This is your host, Andy Curry. Welcome to the program today. I am excited because I have on the line with me Austin Hill Shaw, who has been speaking professionally for three years. The content he speaks on is really interesting. It is creativity and innovation. Austin speaks primarily in the U.S. He has written a book called The Shoreline of Wonder on Being Creative. And he's written an e-book called Between the Bridge and the Water, Death, Rebirth, and Creative Awakening. So, Austin, welcome to the program. Thank you, Andy. We are glad to have you here with us. Now, would you tell us about your speaking business? Who are you speaking to and what are you teaching them? So, primarily I'm speaking to uh, small businesses and organizations and even religious groups as well. And um, and the, the nature of what I'm talking about is basically creativity. And my fundamental message for all of the different audiences is that Creativity is not a gift of certain individuals and not others. It's a defining trait of what it means to be human. And so my goal is to take this idea of creativity and take it out of some exotic thing that that only certain people are able to do or a talent only certain people have, but as a path by which all people uh, can start to feel more fulfilled, more alive, more joyous in whatever it is that they choose to do whether it's scientific, whether it's technological, whether it's art or business, or even if it's a service or um, in relationship with their family. So all of those things are ways in which I uh, think about creativity. And creativity has this sort of universal appeal. And, uh, and it took me a long time to come up with a satisfying definition of actually what, what it means to create, one that really you know, as human beings, we can apply to anything. And that definition is very simple, that creativity is connecting with the world and affecting it in a meaningful way. And when we start to dissect that definition, we start to recognize that, you know, all of us have a desire to connect. You know, we all want to love and be loved. We all have a desire to make a difference. We want to feel that we're having some positive impact on the world. And we all have a need for meaning. You know, we all need to have an overarching narrative that allows us to kind of weave together and quilt together the seemingly disjointed aspects of our busy lives. And so, again, I I love talking to all sorts of different types of groups because it allows me as as a creator myself to constantly learn how people are perceiving of, of their own creativity, how they're either applying it, or how they're failing to apply it. And so that's, that's kind of what my, my speaking business is around. Um, and like I said, I speak to all different sorts of people. Um, I speak at conferences, sometimes I'm speaking in kind of small uh, workshop style setting. Um, sometimes I'm working at retreats and sometimes I'm you know in front of large, large audiences, so. What was the last uh, audience or two that you spoke to? Well, the last audience that I spoke to recently was actually, it was, it was, it was basically a safe house for, um, for women who were escaping women and children who were escaping, uh, sexual exploitation and who were, and it was, you know, it was a small group of 15 women who brought me in. And it was, uh, and I have two daughters myself, you know, one who's two and one who's five. And, and it was very moving to be in that, that, that setting because, you know, there's a lot, especially in the Bay Area and throughout the world, there's a recognition that there's a lot of exploitation and slavery that's still going on. And so the whole goal of that particular talk was to help one bring value and creativity to the staff who is there. Because even though they're supporting people that are in some of the most difficult positions of their lives, sometimes as caregivers, they forget to, to care for themselves. And so again, we wanted to bring in these ideas of how are you feeling connected at work with you and your coworkers? How do you feel like you're making a difference without, 
you know, foregoing your own needs? And what's the meaning that you're ascribing to this, even when you're working with people who are coming out of some horrific conditions? And so that was, you know, there was a, it was a very emotional experience, uh, but also a very moving experience. And I also recently uh, spoke with a sustainable meat company that has a farm to table um, policy where they're basically they're raising their own cattle with the philosophy of how can they actually leave the land better off when they're done with it, you know, kind of going against sort of conventional grazing practices and bring a higher quality of, of, of meat to the consumer and one that they're willing to pay for. So that was a really interesting um, uh, talk with, with people because we're dealing with people that are working in operations and leadership and organization, but we're also working with farmers and ranchers. And so it was an incredibly diverse group. But again, if you look at everybody in there, they all have that same desire to feel connected, to make a difference and have meaning in their lives. And so that was the narrative that we were weaving together with them. And next, next month, I'll be speaking at Google on doing a talk on uh, mindfulness and creativity. They're bringing me in specifically to talk to their mindfulness group. So that's back, exciting. You bet. Well, back to the, the cattle thing. What, um, I'm, I have a little bit of a disconnect. What are, what are you teaching them creativity wise? How does that enter into what you were teaching them? So, so essentially, again, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is that when you have a, when you have a big vision like that, okay, is that we're going to actually have, we're going to be looking over the livestock and making sure that they're well off and we're creating the land better. At the, so at the same time, we're, we're concerned about how we're getting that to our butcheries and then to into our restaurants. You basically have an incredibly um, complex supply line that has all sorts of different people in there. Right. And so when people, and, and since it's such a growing business that they're moving so fast, often people lose the sense, they get more into the mode of efficiency and start to lose track of the human, the humanity in each and every one of those people that are working there. And so, again, this is a retreat environment by which all of the people there could start to come back together and recognize that these people that they're maybe having quick phone calls with or brief interactions as they're growing this company can also pause for a second so that they can start seeing one another as valued members of this whole, whole thing that they're trying to build and seeing one another as creators. And that was basically the picture I'm painting. If you see a person is just like, that's just a person who's a rancher, or this person is just a manager, and you start to get into those kind of habituated relationships, you start to lose your ability to innovate. But once you start to really drop into the experience that each one of these people have a valuable piece of this and recognizing the interdependence um, of our whole system, well, then, then you can start to, it, it makes you value people more and it makes people feel more fulfilled and connected to the entire process. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, you're, you said you're speaking at Google soon. Do you care to reveal what you're going to work with them on or can you do that at this point? Um, no, I have no problem with that. We, you know, we're going to be talking about creat creativity and mindfulness. And then mindfulness is something that's that's, uh, you know, it's really comes out of the spiritual world, specifically Buddhist meditation. And uh, mindfulness is a, it's a big word right now in, at least in the Bay Area, in terms of how people can go about living their lives, living their professional lives in a way where they're not totally getting distracted by technology, but are actually able to be in the, in, in, in the, in the moment and really can experience the vibrancy of life itself. And so mindfulness traditionally is when a meditator is sitting in meditation, it's the ability of the mind to return a distracted brain back into a focal object, which is usually the breath. But typically, as, as mindfulness is applied within our living situation, it's about how do we not get distracted and just kind of be in what we would call our discursive thoughts all the time, but actually can enter into the world as it is. Because from the perspective of creativity and innovation, create, you know, new ideas don't come from just the re broken record of a recycled thought, but by finding the gaps in between thoughts and allowing the world to come rushing in. And that's the experience of the aha moment. So 
We'll be talking about the aha moment, and we'll be talking about service, and we'll also be talking about how to integrate everything so that you can feel that sense of aliveness no matter what you're doing, that sense of creative flow in your professional and your personal life. So that's kind of the gist of the talk. Okay. Let's talk a minute about your, your book. You wrote The Shoreline of, of Wonder. Is it Wonder or Wonder? I think it's Wonder, isn't it? Wonder, yeah. The Shoreline wonder. of Wonder on Being, uh-huh, on okay. being Creative. Okay. T- tell us about yeah. that book. So The Shoreline of Wonder was actually an eight-year project, and uh, I started in 2004. And I, I am actually trained as an architect, and I still do – some of my time is spent doing our, um, is basically doing design work. And um, the shoreline of wonder came from, well, I was in architecture school, you know, sometimes I'd have an idea and I'd run with it and I felt ecstatic. And other times I'd feel con- very blocked and watch my fellow students kind of move ahead of me. And it was very painful. And so, you know, based on that experience, I, I just got really interested in why and where creativity comes from. And spent a lot of time writing on it. You know, it took eight years because I wasn't, it wasn't that I wasn't being diligent about writing. It's just in order to tackle uh, a subject as, as immense and as universally appealing as creativity, I really had to uh, um, kind of go through the process of living into what it meant to be a creator. And so um, it was, it was released in 2012 and um, you know, not, like there's so many books that come out in the world every, every you know, day. There's something like 3000 books, but there have been people that have read it, uh, such as Ed Catmull, uh, the president of Pixar and Disney animation. And he loves it. And he wrote a fabulous book on creativity called creativity incorporated, which talks about his work with Pixar and Disney. Mm-hmm. So again, even though it hasn't been seen by a lot of eyes, it's seen by some really, you know, it's, it's got a lot of a pull for those people who have seen it. And I'm incredibly proud of the way it came out. So what did you finally decide where creativity comes from? Where does creativity come from? Well, I think it's an, it's an innate quality in being human. And it actually, it has actually the most defining trait of who we are. Because when we're creative, we're using kind of the three levels of awareness that we have. We're using sensorial awareness, which is a tie to our physical body, and all the five senses and gut instincts. And then we're also using conceptual awareness, which is really the, the magic of our minds, our ability to remember some version of ourselves in the past and envision some version, uh, version of ourselves in the future and to carry a creative project for through time. And also our transrational, what we, what we may call our spiritual awareness, which comes in the forms of insights and openings and hunches and connections and synchronicities. And so when we're in the space of creative flow, we're basically taking that very large and expansive sense of awareness, but channeling it through discrete actions, movements, and decisions. And for example, when you're in the, you know, in the presence of a great speaker or teacher or healer or artist, you get a sense of, you can, there's one person that you're looking at, but you feel the tides of eternity moving through them. It's something way beyond than what you're just you know, seeing, so you can, you can kind of contain within that one individual. And that's because they're connecting, they're, they're making connections in real time, um, almost like lightning rods connecting heaven and earth. Interesting. Okay. Now, how did you get started in the speaking business? So after writing the shoreline of wonder, um, just by a synchronicity, some friends of mine who are already in the in the National Speakers Association suggested that I start to get involved so that I could start to learn a little bit more about the art and the business of speaking. And so it really just kind of fell into my lap. I was encouraged to do this. I dedicated a ton of time to writing this. And of course, you know, once you get out, you, you, know, you have to learn how to market it and speak on it. And so I did that and I joined something that was called ProTrack at the time, uh, which was offered by uh, the local chapter out here in the Bay Area. And, um, and it was a fantastic course that we had for uh, 10 months where we, ha- we, you know, lots of speakers came in and volunteered their time and just taught us, again, the art and business of speaking. And what I really got out of that, which, is, which would, um, would amaze me, is like speakers love to speak. We do this because 
we love sharing things with people out in the world. We love changing people's lives, either inspiring them, providing them with step-by-step instruction, those sorts of things. And it was just, it was an amazing experience to see all these people um, at all different sorts of levels of success saying, here's what you do, try this. And to be in a place where I could call people up and talk about contracts and how to secure different things, to, you know, it's still an incredible resource. And so it's really fun to be around speakers and hear people who are really impassioned about their particular topics. And, uh, and I love that. I love that kind of entrepreneurial mindset and creative mindset that comes from people who are saying, this is what I'm about and this is what I'm here to share with the world. Right. That's neat. Well, Austin, how can uh, people learn more about you? And, and if they want to hear you speak, how do they go about doing that? Yeah. So the way you can connect with me is you can go to www.austinhillshaw.com. Uh, that's my website. Um, if you go on there, there's places where you can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, I send out a video blog every week. It comes out every Sunday just on a topic related to creativity and innovation. I have free resources on there, such as the Creator's Cheat Sheet, which is a uh, one-page, two-sided document with the whole framework that I think about in creativity. Um, And you can also take the Creativity Quiz, which is a a free quiz that basically allows you to see uh, not if you're a creative or not, but what type of creator you are. And so those are all ways which you can start to intersect me and if you're on my newsletter, then you also know when and where I'm speaking. Okay. Well, fantastic. Austin, thank you so much for giving us a peek inside of your business. That was great information. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andy, for yeah for inviting me. This has been, been a lot of fun. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.